Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Zero Escape 9 Hours 9 Persons 9 Doors. In the last episode if you don't remember we went ahead and we figured out the solution to the puzzles in the uh, first class cabins I believe it was. We played a bit of piano, Snake wanted to murder Seven a couple of times, it was all good. And in this episode we're continuing on down this hallway uh, to move on to the next puzzle room. Now. Before we go ahead and get get into this video, you can skip this if you want, but if I'm uploading this on time, then it should be September 12th, which is actually my birthday, which is actually really cool. And uh, it also should be, if I'm correct, this should be episode 27, which 2 plus 7 equals 9. So, neato. It seems like we're always doing puzzle rooms whenever we're on a an episode that has a digital root of nine. Anyways, let's get into this. He came out of the door and into a long, straight hallway. He passed for a moment and turned around to look behind him. Seven was bent over, apparently doing something to the door. What's he up to? Junpei spoke more or less to himself, but apparently Seven had heard anyway. The larger man stood up and turned to Junpei. I was just putting one of these plates in the doors there. It ought to keep the door from locking again. Now we can come back here anytime we want, right? Ah, why would you want to come back here? Snake was re Snake was a reasonable one. Seven thought about it for a moment before he answered. I might like to play a little piano. Piano? Come on, let's get moving. We aren't out of this yet. Without waiting for an answer, Seven started off down the hallway. Snake shrugged, sighed, and quietly followed Seven. That's a lie, Junpei thought to himself. He had difficulty enough believing Seven could play the piano. But even if he could, the piano they just left was largely useless. The cue board completely scrambled. If Seven wanted to come back, it was unlikely he'd intended do to do so in order to play the piano. But if that was the case, then why would he want to leave the door unlocked? Junpei frowned, took one last look at the door, and then walked away toward his companions. After some time... In the hallway, they emerged into a larger area, more open. A large metal grate, like the door of a jail, divided it in half. Hey, this is the room we saw earlier! And they shook it for a while, but as they expected, it did, not, it did not move. Behind the grate were two elevators. From so far away, however, it was difficult to tell if they were still operating. On the left side of the grate was a door. Unfortunately, however, it was locked and refused to open. Junpei took a moment to examine the left side of the room. Next to the wall was a set of stairs leading downward. Standing guard at the top of the stairway was a larger iron gate. Foreboding as it was, the gate seemed to be the sort that could be opened, unlike the metal grate that bisected the room. With luck, Junpei hoped he might be able to get it open. The female symbol? He wasn't quite sure what to make of it. Snake, naturally, was somewhat more sure. Ah! The Venus symbol, I imagine. Do you recall the similar symbols near the large central stairway? They reference many of the solar bodies. Sun. Saturn. Earth. So, as you can see, that one is likely... Not the woman symbol, but a Venus symbol. So, I assume... While they had been discussing the symbols, Junpei now realized Seven had slipped away. His absence now felt Snake and Junpei turned to look for their missing companion. There. Seven had left them to head down the hallway extended to the right of the stairs. Junpei grabbed Snake to lead him in the right direction, and they both headed off after Seven. Before long, the three of them stood in front of a door. It was a French door. Junpei tested the door and realized that, unlike so many others that they'd encountered, it was unlocked. Almost as though he was afraid it would suddenly lock itself, Junpei threw the door open. He stepped inside. It only took a moment for Junpei to take in his new surroundings. Is this some kind of casino? Sure looks like one. Before Junpei could comment further, a noise from behind made him turn around. Snake was shaking the door they'd just come through. 
As Seven and Junpei watched, he threw up his hands in frustration and then kicked the door for good measure. It looked as though they were once again locked in. There was no reason to panic, however. Even if the door had been left open, there was nowhere for them to go back there. They would have to find another way out. Alright guys, let's split up and search this room. Come on, no dawdling, let's go! Quickly now! Spurred to action by Seven's words, Junpei and Snake began to examine the room. Locked inside once again, this time in a casino. This one looks pretty cool. Card 5. The 5 of spades. If we move up to the bar counter here, we have a couple of more items, like there's something on the counter, it looks like a card, a playing card. Card 7. The 7 of spades. A lot of spades this time around. Hmm? A playing card? The 4 of spades. We move back, go to the left over here, we get the Three of Spades. And right over here, well at least this one isn't lit, but it looks... Ah, uh, I accidentally examined the fireplace. Well, at least this one isn't lit like the one in the first class cabin. Maybe that's why it feels a little chilly in here. We look up here, however, like I intended. Hmm? I didn't think I'd find a card here. Card six. Six of spades. It's lit up by the lights. It's shedding quite a bit of light. So we find... Wait, when those two lights turned on, I heard something from the bottom of the fireplace. What was that? I heard something down there. As you can see on the top screen, there seems to be a bag down there in the fireplace now. Also, interesting thing to note is that these look like, you know, the different suits of a playing card. We have clubs, diamonds, and hearts, which is, uh, the, which is quite different from our spade that we have on the card. So just keep it, that in mind. Casino coin bag. There are a whole bunch of coins stuffed into this Veller bag. Look at all these coins. Perhaps these coins will allow us to convince the machines to move. This bag's full of coins. And I think I know just the place to use them. When you're in a casino, what better place to take all of your coins than to the slot machines? Go ahead and put some coins into the slot here. A coin in the coin slot. Come on, you little bastards, I only need one of you. And look at that, we have a diamond, a heart, and a club. Just like what we saw on the images earlier. You go ahead and begin to spin the roulette, and you press them in order. Club, diamond, heart. 777! Seven, seven, seven. Seven, seven, seven! Yes! Seven, seven, seven! And I think I heard something unlocking in there. Impressive, Junpei. It would appear to be unlocked now. There's something akin to a drawer in the bottom part of the machine, yes? That is a pickup drawer for the dividend. Probably the lock, lock for the drawer got unlocked. Please open it if you would. And we get not only a, a card, but a key as well. No key card, though. What is it? Is there something in there? Yeah, a playing card. And this, a key with the Venus symbol on it. Sweet! Excellent, Junpei. Now we will be able to open the gate. Then we just need to figure out how to get out of this room. Correct. Come on, Junpei. Hurry up. And he's off. And there was a playing card and a Venus key. Better put the key in my pocket for later. As for the card... The Two of Spades. So now that we have a whole crap ton of cards, we're going to go ahead and move over to the table uh, right over here once again. Suddenly, Seven began to speak. Uh, Baccarat, you ever played Junpei? Junpei shook his head. He'd barely even heard of the game. Alright, then how do I explain the rules to you a bit? See, Baccarat is kind of an unusual game. You got the banker and the player. And the whole point is that you guess which one's going to win. And whether the banker or the player wins all depends on their hands. The way each hand works is different from other games too. So you take the number from the ones place and you add up the value of all your cards. Whoever gets the number closest to 9 wins. If your number is smaller than your opponent's, you lose. And that's it. That's the explanation. Got it? 
Well, actually, there's a lot more to it. Strategy, details, that sort of stuff. But what I just told you sums up the core game pretty well. The single digit of the sum of all cards you have. The strongest hand is a 9. And the weakest hand is a 0. You just ignore the number in the 10 spot. You get it? I'm sort of going southern with his voice here. He hadn't been asked for it, but Seven's explanation, rushed through it had been, was helpful. Although he had only half understood most of it, Junpei now felt as though he had some grasp of how victory was won in Baccarat. However, Junpei had no way of knowing if the puzzle in the Baccarat table in front of them made use of those rules, and if it did, in what way. No problem, he told himself. He would simply have to try everything he could think of. Feeling more confident, if only slightly, Junpei approached the Baccarat table. For this, you want to go ahead and insert the cards here. Seven, are we really supposed to play Baccarat? It's a uh, Baccarat table. What the hell else would we do? Hmm. Ah, stop worrying about it. It's real simple. Uh, what's the opponent's hand? Well, there's an eight in that glass case. All right, and that's your opponent's number. And if that's the case, what three cards do we need to get that number? Three cards? There are a couple of indentations with the white lines around them, right? That means we gotta put down three cards. So, place three cards here and defeat the opponent's eight. And that's what I've gotta do, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Something tells me those aren't the only rules. Alright, I'll give it a shot. Before I start, I better make sure I've got the rules straight. There are three empty indentations. I just gotta pick a card and play it. I figure if I put them in the right spots, something ought to happen. Alright, let's give this a try. For this, you wanna go ahead and insert the cards two, three, and four. Alright, if I just put down these three cards. Yes, open for me. Saying the words open for me instead of something like open sesame just feels really weird. Great, you did it, Junpei. You think it's telling us to take the 8 card? Come on, let's grab it. Alright, let's take this card. The 8 of spades. Very nice. Now, what we want to do is head over to this... Uh, I guess, to make a pun here, I guess you could say this is a card reader. But for a different type of card. The card slot. Looks like we need to put a playing card in here. Alright, let's give it a shot. We put in the 8 to get the digital root for 9, and in you go, hey, alright, it opened up. It seems we have another device to contend with, yes? There are three slots in this one. Let's see, three slots for cards, and there's a 9 right below them. So that probably means we gotta make 9 with the three cards we put in the slots, right? Just like what we did over at the Baccarat table. Alright, let's give it a shot. We only got three cards, so let's put them in. Alright, so I put all the cards we had left into the slots. What happens now? Is that... Yes, I did hear something from the exit. Excellent work, Junpei. Wonderful. It seems the exit is unlocked. Let's go. We move back. Move through the door. Alright, let's go. And that's going to be the end of this video. I know this was kind of short, but we got through an entire escape room, so I'm happy. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!